got new glasses. I'm so excited. I waited so long for these to come in. And you know what? It took me a long time to find them. And none of them will sit where I want them to sit up here. Like I wish it would sit like right there, you know. But it just isn't working that way. So we will try our best. Anyways, let me know what you guys think of my new glasses. Um, and I do love them a lot. They go perfectly with this wig, right? And, uh, and anyways, I received a request, several requests actually, uh, just to give my uh, perceptions, my viewpoints, my opinions on Moses Hockman. Hawkman, <laughs> uh, Trisha Paytas' fiance. So that is what we're going to talk in this talk about in this video. I am excited to be here with you guys, and I hope I can get it up today too. So let's just get into this video. this channel hello welcome and do say hello in the comments below and I'd love to know who you are who are you guys watching my videos and do subscribe if you would like to that would be really cool and really help my channel if you thumbs up and comment now we're gonna get into Moses Hoffman, my opinion, my perceptions. I don't know the man. I only know what you know. Okay, so with that, let's start with my story. So once upon a time, <laughs> no, I've been engaged like three times, I think, or four times, three times, three or four. I don't want to count right now. Anyways, it's my first engagement and I was uh, very much in love. We were together for four years. And he had taken his, uh, he had taken his um, income tax return and purchased me a beautiful, beautiful, it was beautiful and it was expensive diamond ring. Not expensive compared to like, you know, Trisha. Well, it was like a 4,000 diamond ring, I'll just tell you. Or was it 5,000? Something like that, right? So he purchased me a diamond ring and uh you know asked me to marry him and so we were engaged and um yeah it was like three months before the wedding took place he came over to my apartment and he told me that he couldn't marry me because he wasn't in love with me and he was really really sorry and he was in tears like I was soothing him he was like right here and I was soothing him telling him it's okay you know don't worry about it you know we'll, we'll you know we'll get through this you know he, he ended what I thought was going to be my life I mean I had planned on having two children with this guy we had planned it we planned on having two children we went around looking for homes but like I said, we were together for four years. And so when he told me this, I couldn't be devastated. I couldn't be sad and I couldn't cry because he took it so hard. We spoke on the phone years later and he shared with me why he didn't marry me. And he shared with me what, what his wife was like, right? And so I really wanted to know. And he said, you know, how much he admired me and he started out by saying, you know, that I had my, you know, I had my own money. I had my own apartment, had my own car. I had it together. And he was like, you know, I really admired that you had it together. But, you know, when I started doing Coke, that's him talking to me. You know, when I started doing Coke, you know, you didn't do it that much. And this is like in the conversation he's telling me, I really am so proud of you that you never got into you know, addicted, you know, to drugs and stuff like that. Well, I have a non-addictive personality. And if I ever was going to be addicted to any drugs, I would be addicted to drugs because I've tried a lot of drugs. So, but I'm never, I never got addicted to any drugs. So anyways, um, yeah, he told me that his wife, you know, that his wife and how he met his wife and, you know, how when they were dating, he would have to go rescue her because she would be somewhere like on a corner on a, in a dive bar in front of a dive bar outside 
you know, in the sidewalk at night, throwing up because she was so drunk, you know, or yeah, you know, he'd have to rescue her from, you know, I guess she had an alcohol problem, you know, so he was always like rescuing her. And that is the woman that he married. Um, he did tell me that all of his girlfriends after me were Latina and that she was Latina, but, uh, you know, she needed to be rescued. She had some real serious addiction issues. And, um, you know, I didn't ask if he had addiction is issues or what happened to him, but he told me that the reason he didn't marry me was because there wasn't anything wrong with me. And I, and I said, what? And he said, yeah, there was nothing wrong with you. There was nothing for me to fix. And I, and I just, I was like, wow, you know, that just like, I tried so hard, you know, to be this person that I wanted to be, you know, and I thought would be attractive to people, you know, going, getting degrees and having my own career and, you know, doing, knowing what I want. And he, that part, he finally realized 30 years later, that's what he didn't like about me. So having shared that story with you, I'm thinking that Moses may fit into this category of how some men need to fix women. And so with that, let's go. I took some notes, okay? So let's go what these men that need to fix women, what do they want and what do they look for? And that way we can see if... Uh, you know, we may fall into any of these categories as women and as men, listen. Okay, so when a man gets into a relationship, you know, these men that want to fix women, but I would say this is in general to most men, they want to feel important, they want to feel helpful, they want to feel like a man. You know, even if your man doesn't have any money or anything like that, you never want to emasculate and take something away from him. Now, this man wants to feel helpful and he wants to feel significant in making his woman happy. He wants his woman to be happy because of him and the things that he does. These men are attracted to women who are broken and that who have challenges or, you know, are, are sick or need help in some sort of way. Are women who've had a string of broken relationships who talk to her man and, you know, tell her man all about how bad all these relationships were and, you know, what, who did to who and getting into all this past drama. And this man will think, oh my, I can do better than that. And he feels better and better around her. And when he sees that he can really teach her something, make a change, make her laugh, make her smile, he will fall more and more in love with that woman. These men can instantly feel if the woman's expectations are really, really low. Like, where does she set the bar? Like, you know, like some women you can call a B-I-T-C-H. You know, if, you know, some women you call them that and it doesn't mean anything to them. They'll, they'll call you, you know, something back or they'll throw something at you, or the women will start crying, or, you know, that doesn't exist in your relationship. But a man who wants to fix a woman, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. He wants to make sure that that woman, I mean, he will see you as having very low expectations because obviously he can fill them. Okay. You know, some of these men love women who are like super bitchy and grouchy when they're, you know, they don't get their high maintenance needs met or they don't, the, the men don't buy them some sort of materialistic jewelry or, or anything like that. They get grouchy and they get like, you know, like entitled and just bratty. And somehow or another, the man, if he can afford it, he'll go out and buy her something. As soon as he changes that behavior in her and sees her become a little happy, that gives him his adrenaline rush that he needs. That gives him what he needs to boost him up. Now, these are typical men that like fixing women. So I'm just kind of explaining the characteristics of both. According to Marie Claire online, there are 12 qualities that these men who like to fix women, there are 12 qualities 
of strong women that these men, for some reason, if you're a strong woman and you find a man who wants to fix something, for some reason, this man is going to find an excuse or he's, he's just not going to be that into you. Basically, that's what it is. This man who wants to fix a woman and he meets you and you're a strong woman and it will leave you a little confused. He just won't be that into you. So why don't we go down Marie Claire's 12 qualities of strong women that most men, especially the ones who have this issue, can't handle. Number one. And as I'm saying all this, obviously we're, we're thinking about Moses, okay? And we're thinking about Trisha, okay? So as far as the strong women and the qualities, it's a woman who's a fighter. A woman who not only will, will work hard and is determined and can and exceeds her goals. Like this woman has goals, okay? This woman does not have time for petty chit chat or petty drama. She She's goal oriented. She's going somewhere and she knows what she wants. And she doesn't, she, she tells people all around her who she is and what she wants by the way she presents herself. That is a strong woman and that scares a man who's trying to go around finding someone to fix. He's not going to be attracted to that. He might be attracted physically at first, right? He may go out with her a couple times and then he's just going to feel, I'm just not that into her. You know, the chemistry isn't there. And uh, you can't really figure out why. But one of the reasons why is she may be a strong woman. Huh. Strong women do not need validation from others. And strong women, if they're feeling strong and someone, you know, they read a comment and it's negative, it's not going to affect them as much as it would someone who was vulnerable. So, you know, when you're having a conversation and you're getting to meet, know someone like your first dating and say it's a man that, that needs to fix you. Or, you know, it could be vice versa. You could be the woman trying to fix the man. But in this case, we're talking about Moses and Trisha and what and why. Moses is in this relationship with Trisha. What is it about Trisha, right? What is it about Trisha that Moses is attracted to? He may be the type of man that wants to fix a woman, which Trisha really raises the bar, I think, on this. Okay, she is a very strong woman, and we're going to talk about this in the financial category. Strong women are self-sufficient. Strong women do not depend or they don't have that codependent mindset. Oh, I'll just get money from the government. Oh, I'll just find some rich man who'll, you know, give me his credit card and I won't have to rent, uh, uh, work. No, no, no. Those are not strong women. They may appear to be strong. They're not strong, even though they're wearing, uh, you know, all the facade. They've got everything that looks like they're, you know, the long pointy nails that go like that. You know, that's them, right? They're not strong women. A strong woman has her own money. A strong woman doesn't need a man for financial security. And that is a really, really high attraction for a strong man. Let me tell you that. If, you, if there's a strong man around, right, and he's got his finances and his career and his life, Together, of course, everyone has flaws, but he's got it together. He wants a woman who has it together. He doesn't want a woman. Well, he might. If he really falls in love with someone, he might say, well, come on in. Don't worry and everything. But that person isn't that strong, you guys. Okay? Because a strong woman has her own. She has her own. And she gets her own. And she doesn't like to be told what to do. Woman, she respects honesty and vulnerability. The thing with Trisha, and we'll see in the future if this has changed, if a man is honest with Trisha and shows his vulnerability and lets her get in, then she kind of uses it against him when something happens. And I hope that never happens again. We're only wishing the best for her and Moses. And so hopefully uh, that won't happen again. You don't lie to a strong woman because she'll, she'll be looking at you like, What'd you say? Hard for me. It's hard for me to actually 
talk about Moses in any negative way or, or say that he may have any flaws because I don't make things up and I haven't seen any. You know, I, I really, I mean, I've talked about his flaws. I mean, I know in the past that he, you know, what he did with the texting and all that other stuff. And, uh, but, you know, other than what I can, from my past experiences and from research that I've done, I think that it's a possibility that Moses wants to fix her and just, and he gets that from her. And if it's not going to be from Trisha, then it's going to be from someone else. Men typically who like to fix women, there are plenty out, plenty of women out there that need fixing. We all know how much Trisha Paytas needs to be fixed. So, you know, maybe it'll be a great pairing. Let's hope it is. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I did the best I could. Um, I am, um, I'm looking forward to this year on YouTube. I don't have that far to go, you guys, for a thousand subscribers. I need about 2,000 more, is it minutes? I don't know. 2,000 more hours? I don't know. Of view time. I know you need 4,000 minutes of view time. So I need 2,000 more minutes of view time. So yeah, I've got to make more videos. And if you guys, if you just subscribe, that would help me out so much. So thanks again for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you very soon. Bye. <laughs>